Hey everyone, I'm going to be going through some 2013 NFL Draft thoughts coming up. I watched USC tape today of the USC Trojans. I'm going to just kind of go over my notes with everyone and share those. I shared them on Twitter, at Shane P. Hallam, if you, if you want to check that out and get them earlier than everyone else. But we'll start with the quarterback, Matt Barkley, the consensus number one senior QB, and it's apparent why he is the number one senior quarterback, and he's probably going to be taken in the top 10 to 15 worst case scenario. And when you watch him, you see near near flawless anticipation. He knows where his receivers are going to be, knows when they're going to be there. He knows he's dead set accurate of where they can get the ball, where their range is, where the defender's range is so the defender can't get the ball. And that's his biggest that's the biggest impact he makes in a football game. I, I watched the game against Stanford specifically, and it, this was this was very evident. I mean he put it on the back shoulder, back shoulder throws very difficult to do, especially in college, and Matt Barkley is near mastering that, in my opinion. His technique is very meticulous. Uh, sometimes he pulls the ball a little bit low, especially if his pre-snap reads are off, if the defense seems to do something that he didn't expect. Um, sometimes that technique can break down a little bit from him, but uh, other than that, the footwork is very good, especially when there's no pressure. He, he plants his foot very well and gets the most out of his arm, the most out of his arm strength. That, that footwork can have an impact on that. He goes through his progressions very well. Many times uh, I saw him hit his third to fourth read on different plays. That's that's big. It's a pro-style system. You can tell he knows what he's doing. That's going to be an easy transition in the NFL. Uh, under pressure, he doesn't always keep his eyes up, up the field. He doesn't always step up in the pocket. This is where a lot of Matt Barkley's poor throws, his interceptions, as well as some of the ducks that he threw came on these type of plays. When the pressure got to him, he didn't step up in the pocket, or when he did, it wasn't very effective, and he wasn't able to plant that foot and still make a good pass. That's a worry, but something he can improve on. His arm strength is average to above average. This is what a lot of people are going to criticize him for. I'm not. He, yeah, he's not great down the field in terms of accuracy or arm strength. He's not going to be this down the field passer. Probably fits better in a West Coast system, but um, when you watch him, you see the short to mid range accuracy as well as the zip on the ball, mid range, you know, 10 yards. He can hit it, and, and that's where he's going to make his money. I think West Coast system would be the best fit. Uh, teams that had success against USC played closer to line. Uh, you know, they played closer to line of scrimmage. They bracketed the coverage to stop the speed of Marquise Lee and Robert Woods. That's where sometimes USC had some problems and Barkley had some problems. I'll be interested to see if he develops or if he takes a step back and it hurts his draft stock. Second player I'm going to talk about is safety, TJ McDonald, who I, I knew somewhat about. You know, I'd watched him because I thought he might declare early, but I wasn't as impressed with him. When I went back and watched a couple of games today, very impressive. He just he jumps out on tape. I mean, his athleticism and the the range that he has. It's tough to watch from the broadcast tape. It's tough to see exactly what safeties do. But when they showed replays, I mean, he was all over the field and he would make plays coming from far away, which was pretty impressive to me. When the ball's thrown near him, he's very quick closing speed. If the guy catches it, a great range, like I said, to break up plays, make the big play. Surprisingly, and, and something I think it's overlooked with safeties a lot of times, is T.J. McDonald, a very good tackler. Uh, his tackling technique was very, very good. Uh, he knows how to wrap up. He goes low on players he needs to go low on. He stays high on players he needs to stay high on. That was something that impressed me as well. He doesn't always go for the big hit like a lot of safeties do. Uh, when There were times when he had a lot of time to hit that closing speed. He would go for the big hit, try to jar the ball, the ball loose. That's where some of my issues come. when he, he can lay the lumber, and that's good, and that's necessary, but he does get over-aggressive at time. I call it Mark Barron syndrome. Mark Barron, as a, as a junior, had this problem where he'd go for the big play, go for the interception. He'd go to make a play on the ball, and he would let a big play happen. And T.J. McDonald does that from time to time. Now, that's something Mark Barron corrected going into his senior year, turned into a top-10 pick. I think T.J. McDonald could do that as well. Seems like a pretty good safety class, though. Uh, misses on some plays because he goes for the ball but and allows some big plays to get past him. He's a little bit high cut. Sometimes he'll, he'll, he'll play um, a little bit high. He doesn't have his butt that low to the ground. That, that can hurt his explosion. He relies a little bit more on his athleticism sometimes than his back pedal and his technique. So it, it's scary to me if, if he's going to be able to turn and run with some of these slot faster receivers in the NFL. We'll see. That's something that also can be improved. So I liked what I saw from TJ McDonald. Next, we're going to move to Robert Woods, the wide receiver. Underclass may not declare for this draft, but a lot of people have him as top five, top ten pick. I want to take a look 
because I, I didn't focus that much on him when I was watching the games last year because I knew he couldn't declare for the draft. I, I like him. I like the physical talent, but I didn't come away thinking, oh, man, this is a top 10 pick. I wasn't even a big Justin Blackman fan, but I, I kind of came away Robert Woods a little more a little more athletically gifted than Blackman, but there's still a lot of work that needs done. And the biggest thing is his body. His body type just doesn't fit the NFL. He seems very frail. He dealt with some injuries last year, played through them. Toughness is good, but he was pretty frail. He has some some frame to grow, and he, his legs very, very thin. It's, it's scary to make that type of investment on a player that looks like this. So I think he has to bulk up a little bit. I know a lot of times receivers don't want to. I think he, he needs to. Uh, that bulk could be added. Surprisingly, he's 6'1", 190, very, very long arms, and he makes some incredibly difficult catches and some highlight reel catches. That's awesome. But he also, some some of those catches that he probably could reach out and catch, he didn't always do that. And a surprisingly limited range, something that I think can be improved with, with some coaching and with some practice, maybe a little bit more work. But he doesn't always seem to, to make those those big, long catches that his, his arms could make. So that was a bit surprising to me. Separation's not consistent, but when he gets it, he gets it really well. I mean, he definitely possesses the down-the-field speed, and he, he makes his cuts very quickly, and that's something I like, too. He comes in and out of his breaks pretty smooth, especially for a sophomore, very smooth, and one of the better sophomore receivers I've seen in that. So I'm pretty impressed with him from that perspective. The big issue is press coverage, and it's, it's a big issue with a lot of college players, but because he doesn't have that strong upper body or that strong lower body, when he gets pressed, he doesn't get off the line of scrimmage, he doesn't get separation, and this is where he's going to get a lot of criticism, especially for me if that doesn't improve this year, but he has time to improve, but he has a year or two for that. You have to like his speed and playmaking ability after the catch. He makes people miss. Uh, he, he's very good in open space. He's tough to, to catch one-on-one -on -one because he is so shifty. He has things you can't teach. The things that he has problems with, you can teach or you can work on. So I'm interested to see what happens from him this year. A couple other players that I watched, not as high profile. Uh, defensive end Wes Horton, 6'5", 260, eight, he had eight sacks this past season. I was pretty impressed. I think he's a little bit underrated right now. Pretty stout against the run. Uh, he's not just a pass rushing defensive end. You, you can tell that he has some pretty good bulk. He looks even a little bit bigger than 260. Um, so I don't know if, if that, that weight is low or that weight is high. It'll be interesting to see. But he has the physicality to take a running back down and one-on-one. -on -one. He, he, he's gone high on running backs. Guys that are um, pretty big, pretty low to the ground, he's taken on and tackled them one-on-one. -on -one. He's gone after guys low. Um, I like I like what I saw from him in the run game. He has a pretty good anchor. You don't see him get pushed off the line, especially in the run game, too, too much. Uh, it happens every once in a while when he, when he doesn't get his hands inside on the offensive lineman. Um, he doesn't have a great first step, you know, he doesn't have this great pass rushing moves and this these variety of moves, but uh, he's he's crafty, you know, he's crafty in how he gets it done, I some do some different things, uh, he doesn't quite have the upper body strength yet to, to perform a successful bull rush, but he, he's used it, um, he's used a spin move, he's used a, a swim inside, I've seen him go outside, so... You know, I like that. I, I think that's something that can be developed. I, I'll be interested to see how that works this year. His upper body strength needs developed and improved, um, but he's more crafty than strong at the point of attack. He can be caught too high sometimes. The technique, just a little bit off the snap that he needs some issue, some help with. But I think Wes Horton's a player to watch out for. If he improves on that, I think he can be a very successful pass rusher. Uh, the other defensive end, Devon Kennard, I... I, I just watch a little bit of because I really wasn't impressed. I'll go back and watch more of him before. Obviously, we have a lot of time until the draft. I'll go back and watch more, but I, I, just, I just didn't see a whole lot of exceptional ability. Only had four sacks this past year. You can see why. Um, he he's really seems like just another guy out there, just another body out there. He's he's made plays at times, especially when um, some of the interior linemen commanded double teams and he was open. He could take on running backs and fullbacks pretty well. Struggled with better offensive tackles. Um, he has some potential, but he, he looks lost on some plays, especially in space. He has good length, but he disappears for long stretches. So I'll watch a little bit. I'll watch more later. The last player I want to talk about is center Khalid Holmes. Um, for the Trojans, they've had some good centers in the past, and I was pleasantly surprised with Khalid Holmes. Solid. He has good lower body anchor. You don't see him get pushed back very much in the, in the run game especially, and in the in pass uh, protection. I was pretty impressed with him taking on some bigger defensive tackles that were obviously stronger than him, 
but he was pretty technically sound to get it done. Not overly dynamic or athletic. You didn't, I didn't see him pull very much in the games that I watched. Um, I thought his footwork was okay. I think it was good, not great. So I think that is also something that can be developed. He has decent strength in the run game, still can be improved. Maybe not starting potential, but maybe a swing center. I could see him playing some guard, specifically right guard, depending on the scheme and the system. Uh, but he's a player that I think you could get maybe in the mid-rounds and can make an NFL roster. So there you go. I'll be doing these from time to time on some different teams as I watch throughout the summer. Thank you all, and feel free to leave your feedback.